What's going on there, folks? Welcome back here to a Saturday night. It is the Earthmaster out here about uh, 1030 p.m. California time, June 15th, 2024. Latest activity here shows a 1.0 into the uh, Southern California area. As we zoom in here, shows a little bit of movement across the extreme southern edge here of California. Really nothing major going on out here in terms of larger scale movement for now. Uh, out here on the big island of Hawaii, as you can see, still seeing a little bit of movement out here off the coast of the big island. Looking at a uh, little latest quake of 1.7. A little bit of movement outside of the Lohi Sea Mountain as well. And uh, that's a 2.9, 11 kilometers deep for that quake. So let's go ahead and check out the latest information here on the Kilauea Volcano area. In terms of the latest inflation going on there across the big island of Hawaii. And uh, we'll give it a second to load up here. By the way, congratulations to our member, Amanda Little, won today's drawing. So Amanda Little, congratulations. Get a hold of me, earthmastermail at gmail.com is the site, or at least my email contact information. Deformation data here across the Kilauea Volcano does show a little bit of rounding out here in terms of uh, the continued inflation that we've seen over the last week. But this is actually extremely minimal compared to what we had seen in the previous stair-stepping ladder events out here across this volcano. Uh, aside from that, we're still going up and up and up and up and up, and that's where we're headed. Uh, eventually, probably leading off to a, an eruption here across the summit or upper east rift zone, or potentially a magma intrusion event somewhere off away from the area. We've got to keep an eye on this because we did see a swarm of activity earlier today. And yesterday, down into the deeper levels underneath the Pahala area, that is a key indicator of some further influx of magma into the area with the ongoing already inflation there across the region. This should be very interesting to see how this plays out. All right, Cascadia trimmer out here tonight. Let's check this out. 525 epicenters, a pretty decent amount out here across the Cascadia um, not so much down here across the southern end. It looks like we're starting to level out here across certain sections here of the Cascadia up around the Vancouver Island ranges. Of course, the last month of data here shows us coming up. Well, actually, we surpassed the 10,000 epicenter mark here in the last month. Uh, and technically, we could probably minus, oh a week or so it's been roughly about the last three weeks of activity that we've seen elevated trimmer activity out here across the cascadia subduction zone and mainly mainly confined here to the southern end of the cascadia so look at that 10,000 epicenters here in the last 30 days goodness so uh, where we're headed we'll continue to watch this and see what happens uh, over the past week or so we have well yeah about the past week we have seen a little migration up northward here um, into the further further extents here of the Cascadia subduction zone. But the majority, as we notice here, have been at the southern end. Now we're starting to see it on a broader scale basis. So we'll continue to watch that and see what takes place up here across that major subduction zone there in the Pacific Northwest. Uh, the rest of the country, minimal activity at best there across Texas and Oklahoma oil fields outside the Ottawa area there in Canada, 2.3 coming in. Earlier this evening, very small microquake. Aside from that, not a whole lot going on across the rest of the country. We did see a 6.1. Oh, well, it looks like they downgraded that to 6.0 outside the Macquarie Island area, well south of New Zealand on a fracture zone out here. If you look at the earthquake 3D globe here, we got a lot going on down here on the southern end of the globe. Uh, a couple earthquakes here crisscrossing each other. Well, across from each other, I should say. Uh, showing, uh, you know, some decent movement down here across the Antarctica area. Not a whole lot across the uh, divergent zones here in the southeastern Pacific, but uh, we'll continue to keep an eye on that. With this movement right here, we should see some further activity around the New Zealand area where it looks like uh, there was some older movement here earlier underneath the North Island area. Still getting uh, some deeper activity here into the subduction zone of the Hikurangi area. So we'll continue to keep an eye on that area. Obviously, we got quite a bit going on. A lot of movement taking place here across the globe right now. Uh, Taiwan southward into the Philippines and southward here across the Indonesia Islands area. Still showing quite a bit of clustering going on. 
Not a whole lot of major activity across the Kuro-Kamachaka for now or the Alaska area. Looks like things have kind of toned down here across the northern regions. Um, still lighting up out here across the Alaska area, but really nothing of major concern for now. Further out and about, uh, let's see what else we got here across the rest of the globe. Some movement out in uh, eastern Af... Uh, let's see, where's that 4.4? Looks like that's east, extreme eastern Afghanistan area. Typical deep movement there, almost 200 kilometers deep for that quake. Uh, Mediterranean area is fairly quiet, aside from some smaller earthquake activity. 5.4 down into the South Sandwich Trench, as I noted though. You know, there's a lot going on down here. If you position the globe here and th in this area, in this position here, looks like things are starting to move big time down here across the southern area of the world. Uh, so we'll just see how this plays out here. Definitely uh, uh, quite a bit of interesting movement there well south here so, uh, on the southern edge here of this planet that we live on. All right, uh, let's see what we got here. Yellowstone National Park, not a whole lot going on here. We did see quite the wind event earlier. Don't let anyone fool you. This is nothing other than wind. I explained that on my previous update. Aside from earth, uh, aside from wind, there's not a whole lot of earthquake activity out here for now. Space weather activity, well, kind of crackling out here with some sea flare activity. Really nothing of major concern. We do have one interesting sunspot, 3712, that harbors a beta gamma delta structure. That's going to be the sunspot right here. It is in its growth stage. Uh, meaning that this could continue to develop and stay complex. We'll have to keep an eye on it, though, see if we don't get some separation here of the core that would split this area and basically stabilize the sunspot. Uh, but for now, we'll, we'll definitely keep an eye on that. Uh, aside from that, uh, this sunspot up here, it's large, but it does have a separation here in between the core, which means we're not really expecting much from this area in terms of solar flaring. And uh, overall threat right now shows about a 55% chance for M flare, X flare around 10%. C flare, obviously we're flaring consistently here with the C flare category. No major auroras are expected or forecasted. And far as the far side sun watch, 3697. That's the uh, culprit there of many X flares here recently. We've chatted about that previously, 3664. We will see. If it comes back around the bend here in a week or so to provide us with maybe some more stronger flaring, we'll definitely watch that. Uh, Storm Prediction Center, a little bit of noise out there tonight across the northern plains, uh, showing some thunderstorm activity out there and a chance of some uh, tornado wind and hail threats out there uh, for the early morning hours, but uh, really not expecting anything of major uh, tornado outbreak for now. If we look at the extended models here, Still looking at maybe some type of tropical development stirring up there in the Gulf around the 23rd. And also there's a little bit of uh, interesting activity here right about there uh, on the 19th of June here in a couple days. This area is going to get uh, a whole bunch of rain it looks like um, coming up. Let's see, southeastern Texas area. So let's see what we got. Total accumulated precipitation that's put this run on. Look at that. Texas, if you guys are in the drought out there, you won't be after this event coming up here. There's going to be a lot of rain coming in to the area. Obviously, I mean, I was I was just out there, uh, not this last week, but the week before, and there was a lot of water out there. Those guys got quite a bit of rainfall here recently, so it looks like more rainfall is forecasted for that area. Um, and the extended model shows that as well. Look at California, goodness, uh, you know. This is typical, though. California doesn't see rain out here in the summertime. This is not our rainy season. So it just sucks. <laughs> I hate the heat. I hate the dry. I want some thunderstorms. But, uh, yeah, it's not going to happen out here. Either way, looks like an active season out here ac across the Gulf states. We'll continue to watch that and see if anything uh, develops out there in terms of tropical development, hurricane status there. All right, uh, once again, congratulations there to Amanda Little, the winner today in our member drawing. Barrett, showing a little bit of activity along with the Chili Station at the same time here. That's a little odd, but, you know, these, these plates have been known to move here 
at the same time. So that's why I kind of keep various stations out here that monitor the earthquake activity. Probably not a coincidence there uh, as we're getting a little bit of adjustment taking place here across the eastern Pacific and uh, adjacent plates. Uh, in the Southern California area, as you can see, just a handful of smaller quakes there. But it does look like one of those 1.9 quakes showed up there across the Barrett Station. But uh, we'll see what happens here, folks. Definitely keep an eye on things. Uh, the Ison area, obviously, still seeing some eruptive activity. I don't think we're looking at anything major now. I don't think we'll see anything major now until things calm down. And then we get to an elevated level again. But right now, we're still... You know, we lost a lot of volume of magma beneath the area of Iceland, and it's slowly going up, but not as fast as the previous levels um, during the last couple of eruptions there that we've seen over the last few months. So um, hard to say if we're going to see things continue to go elevated or not. Here is the most recent eruption on the vertical displacement. Notice the GPS going down, obviously a lack or loss of magma there from the most recent eruption at Iceland. And we've kind of leveled out. The last couple runs do show somewhat of an elevated uptick here in terms of inflation. But I I don't know. Going to have to watch this and see if this continues to have an upward trend or not. But we may, may mellow out here for a little bit. Just upon the observations that I'm seeing right there. All right, folks. Have a good night. Just wanted to do a quick update. Hope everyone stays safe out there Saturday night. Uh, a lot of craziness going on out in the, there in the world. Sometimes I feel much safer just staying at home. A lot of people like to go out and do stuff. And that, there's nothing wrong, wrong with that, right? Got to enjoy yourself here on this planet. But also at the same time, you know, there's no place like home. That's uh, definitely uh, one of my favorite sayings right there. There's no place like home. And I feel um, the most safest here at home. Have a good night. Stay safe out there. We'll catch you guys back out here tomorrow for the Sunday morning update.